Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in this morning. If this is your first time with us, here's our hope and our prayer. We are praying that today is not your last time with us. Hey, here's what I know about you. It's true about me. Our faith can get stuck. For whatever reason, our faith can get stuck. And one of the places it often gets stuck is on Sunday morning. But today, we are going to remember that Jesus, Jesus didn't come into this world for our Sunday mornings. Jesus came into this, this world for our Monday mornings. Those Monday mornings we know all too well. Hey folks, it's time for church. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Last week, if you tuned in with us, we launched a brand new worship series, and that series is called Love is on the Move. As people of faith, we believe that we have a God whose love is always moving in us and through us, moving us from one place to another place. But sometimes, sometimes something happens. Well, it happens to all of us. Our faith gets stuck. Our faith gets stuck. Uh, maybe for you over this last year as COVID has kind of taken over our lives, you felt as though your faith is stuck because you haven't been able to gather with the people you love in church. Or maybe for you, you, you grew up in church, but it was a kind of a horrible experience, if you're honest, and you walked away from the life of faith. But now you're an adult, you're kind of curious about the life of faith, but you're feeling stuck, not sure which way to turn. I think for all of us, our faith can get stuck in one of three places. It can get stuck in our head. It can get stuck on Sunday mornings. It can also get stuck in our knowing. And if that's you, our worship series, Love is on the Move, is meant for you. Because we believe we have a God who's always moving in us. Moving faith from our head to our heart moving faith from Sunday morning to Monday morning, and moving faith from what we know to how we see. We have a God whose love is always moving in and through us. And so here's our hope for you. Our hope is over the course of this series that God's love would move in you so much so that you would take a next step in your faith journey. Now last week we began this series by talking about how God is always moving faith from our head to our heart. And if you missed that message, you can head out to our website, which is calvaryalec.org. You can head out to our YouTube channel and there you can catch up on the series. But today, today what we're going to talk about is how our faith often gets stuck on Sunday morning. Faith often gets stuck in, in what happens on Sunday morning. And we have a God who wants to move faith from our Sunday mornings to our Monday, to our Monday mornings. And to get into this, I want to ask you a question. The question is this. How many of you enjoy Mondays? How many of you like Mondays? Okay, let's be honest. None of us like Monday mornings. We dread Monday mornings because Monday mornings are, are, are that back to reality sort of slap in the face. It's Mondays where, where it's, we drink a whole pot of coffee before 8 a.m. Mondays, well, Mondays are that get over the hangover from the weekend day. We do not like Mondays. Uh, by contrast, uh, at least for people of faith, we've got different sorts of images of what Sundays look like. For example, look at this happy family in church on Sundays. Sunday fun day, we sometimes say. Here's a, here's a crowd of folks in church. Everybody's happy. But when it comes to Monday, our view of Monday is very, very different. Let's be honest. In fact, I found a few, a few memes that give us a picture of what Monday are like for most of us. For example, when the alarm goes off on Monday morning, you got Chunk from the Goonies there. Or how about this one? Not sure if it's the end of the world or 
just Monday. Here's my favorite set of memes. How many Yoda fans out there? Here's Baby Yoda, and it says, Me Sundays. Baby Yoda, nice and happy. And then there's Mondays. Me on Mondays, you got old Yoda, Yoda there. I think there's something that happens to all of us on Sunday afternoons. We start to get this feeling that wells up inside of us. We start to remember that on Monday mornings, we've got to go back to reality. And someone coined this term, Smunday. And Smunday is the moment when Sunday stops feeling like Sunday and the anxiety of Monday, the anxiety of Monday kicks in. We do not like Mondays. I mean, if you're a grandparent, it's on Monday. Monday morning when you wake up and you realize the grandkids have gone back home and the house feels, well, the house feels all too, too quiet. It's on Mondays when, when you have to go back to work and, you, and you're confronted with that boss who just doesn't get it. It's, it's on Mondays when you've got to pack lunches, you've got to run kids to all their activities. It's on Mondays you've got to pay, you got to pay bills. You see, we much prefer Sundays to Mondays. But here's what I want to suggest today, and it's something maybe you've never thought about, and it's this. Jesus didn't come for your Sunday mornings. Jesus came for your Monday mornings. Let me say that again. We have a God who in Jesus, who didn't come for your Sunday mornings. Jesus came for your Monday, your Monday mornings. And I think as Christian people, we often get this mixed up. We believe sometimes that all that matters, all that's important is what happens on Sunday morning. And we forget that Jesus actually came into this world to meet us on our Monday, our Monday mornings. We get this idea that, that all that matters, and we put all this time and energy and resources and efforts into what happens on Sunday. And yes, what we do together as church is important on Sunday. But the fact of the matter is Jesus didn't come into our world for our Sunday mornings. Jesus came for our Monday mornings. Because Jesus knows what our Mondays are like. Uh, I'm going to talk today about Monday morning moments. And when I talk about Monday morning moments, I'm not just talking about what happens after the alarm goes off on Monday morning. I'm talking about those moments in all of our lives that are just plain, they're just plain hard. Kind of like Monday mornings. I mean, we have those Monday morning moments where we remember all of life isn't like Sunday it's not this uh, idyllic day. It's not that every day isn't like Sunday where we're taking boat rides on the lake. We're watching football games with friends. You see, Monday mornings are those moments in our lives that just feel like a train wreck sometimes. Monday morning moments are those moments when life, we realize our lives are just messy. And it's those moments that God came into this world in Jesus for. I believe that with all my heart for two reasons. The first reason is this. Jesus dared to suggest that what we talk about on Sunday has traction on Monday. Let me say that again. Jesus dared to suggest that what we talk about on Sunday has traction on Monday. In fact, get this. Did you know Jesus was thrown out of church? Jesus was thrown out of church because of this, because he dared to suggest that what we talk about on Sunday has traction on Monday. So here's the story. Jesus was in Galilee. Galilee was his home turf. His hometown, Nazareth, was located in Galilee. And Jesus happened to be back home in Nazareth where everybody knew his name. Everybody knew that he was the carpenter's son in town. Everybody knew Mary, his mother, and they had heard about this wild birth that she had had. He was back in Nazareth where everybody knew him. And on this particular day, he decided he was going to go to church, to go to the synagogue. And I imagine as he walked in, everybody sort of had warm fuzzies because they all recognized this hometown boy. And here's how the story goes. It says, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought brought up and on Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll was handed to him. 
he found the place where it was written. Now I imagine he went through that scroll and he had some specific things he wanted to read to that hometown crowd. Uh, some words that had been read in churches for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Words from the prophet Isaiah. And he found that spot and that's when he read these words. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim what? To proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, and to set the oppressed free. And he goes on, it says, Then he rolled up the scroll, he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And I imagine the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, and this is when Jesus gives the shortest message, the shortest sermon ever given. It's one line. Jesus turns to the people and says this, Today, say that with me, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, I know as you listen to that one sentence sermon, some of you are saying, why doesn't my pastor give short sermons like that? Don't get any ideas. But here's what I think Jesus was saying, and it only took a sentence to convey it. He said, today, what you have just heard about captives being set free, about good news for the poor, today is when God wants that to be a reality. Today, in your real life, in our real world, God wants this to be a reality. You see, these words weren't just meant for Sunday morning. They were meant for our Monday mornings. These words weren't just meant to make us feel good on Sunday. They're meant to have real traction in our everyday lives on Monday morning. He went on then to give examples, we might say, uh, of what this looks like, of the oppressed being set free, of good news to the poor. He gave examples of outsiders being given preferential treatment over insiders. Outsiders to the faith were given preference. And there's stories maybe we don't recognize because they happened so long ago, but for those ancient people who first heard Jesus say these words, they knew what Jesus was talking about. He said, I assure you that there were many widows in, Eli in Israel in Elijah's time. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to the widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. Now, we might not recognize this story, but it was a story about how God sent the prophet not to the insiders, but to that one outsider. And when people heard this story, they remembered the story and they didn't like it because they didn't get preference. He gives another example. He says, And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. Once again, Jesus gives an example of how outsiders were given preference over insiders. And let me tell you, those people didn't like it. They didn't like this idea that what they talked about on Sunday had traction on Monday, and here's what happened. All the people in the synagogue, they were furious when they heard this. They got up, they drove him out of town, and they took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But somehow, he walked right through the crowd. You see, this story is a great example of how Jesus dared to suggest that what we talk about on Sunday has traction on Monday. He told these stories of these outsiders who had preference over insiders. He seemed to suggest that, that what we talk about on Sunday isn't meant to be kept in the Sunday box, but it has traction. It has traction on Monday. You see, Jesus dared to suggest that what we talk about on Sunday has traction on Monday. You see, folks, Jesus, Jesus came into this world, not for our Sundays, but for our Mondays. And there's one more reason I am absolutely confident, confident that that's why Jesus came into this world. And it's this. Jesus knew that Sundays are nice, but it's on messy Mondays when we really need God. Isn't that true? 
Sundays are nice, but it's on messy Mondays when we really need God. We have a God who in Jesus knows that every day isn't nice and neat like our Sunday afternoons. That most days we are running the rat race on our Mondays. That our weekdays are hectic. That our lives are complicated. They're hard and they're messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sundays are nice, but it's on our messy Mondays when we really need God. I did some research on Monday mornings and I found out a few things about Monday mornings that unfortunately aren't all that surprising. For example, get this, 50% of employees show up late on Mondays. I'm sure you're well aware of that. Uh, I I would admit Mondays, that's kind of how it goes for me. Or how about this? This one's even sadder. How about this? Productivity on Mondays is at 30%. Oh my goodness. As an employer, if you're an employer, you probably know this already. But how about this one? Maybe this one's the saddest. Most people don't smile until 11, 16 a.m. on Mondays. It's probably because they realize lunch is just around the corner. There was a study done uh, on Twitter And on Twitter, what they did is they took all the words that people plugged in throughout the week and they they sort of ranked them from, from being words that are happy to words that are sad, mad, angry. And they sort of charted when they believed people were happiest during their week based on the words that they plug into Twitter. And get this, here's the graph. Here is Sundays. Look at what happens on Monday morning. Even on Twitter, you can tell that on Monday mornings, people, people are not in the mood for life. Uh, here's a stat, sad statistic. More heart attacks and suicides happen on Mondays than any other day of the week. Friends, I think we have a God In fact, I know we have a God who in Jesus looks at us and everything we face. And this Jesus knows this. Sundays are nice, but it's on our messy Mondays when we really need God. It's a God who knows that all of our days aren't as happy and nice and pretty as our Sundays. It's a God who knows that most of our days we are strung out, that life is hard, that that life is is messy. It's a God who knows that when we go to work and we go to school on Mondays, it's often nothing like Sundays. That on Mondays, when we go to work and we go to school, it's an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. When we go to work and school on Mondays, it's survival of the fittest, if you will. All that matters is the bottom, is the bottom line. Last week, we read a passage that bears repeating because it bears the heart of who God is. In Matthew, we hear these words. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. We have a God who wants to lighten our burdens and knows that most days, most of our Monday morning moments, we're carrying a whole a whole lot of burden. And that's why God came into this world for our, for our Mondays, not necessarily for our Sundays. Now, as I'm around town, there's something that often happens. Often happens, somebody will holler out, Pastor Hans, Pastor Hans, Pastor Hans. And as our church has grown a bit, I, I have to admit something to you. Often I have to sheepishly sort of say, um, uh, who are you? Uh, and I have to introduce myself to them because I don't know who who they are. And nine times out of 10, their response to me is, oh, I go to your church, which is awesome because it gives me an opportunity to have a conversation with them, to get to know them a little bit. But I was thinking about that phrase, I go to church. And I wonder if Jesus was with us today, If he'd want to suggest to us, if he'd want to suggest something like this, don't go to church, folks, be the church. Don't go to church, be the church. Because here's what God knows, that 
He sent his son into this world, not for, for our Sundays, but for our Mondays. And he sent his son into this world who dared to suggest that what we talk about on Sundays has actually has traction on Mondays, that Sundays are nice, but our Mondays, the Mondays are when we really need God's hope, God's love in every one of our lives. Folks, I got a few questions for you today as we close. If you're gathered with family, with friends, maybe you'll, you'll talk about these. In what ways does your faith get stuck on Sunday morning? It happens to all of us, right? We leave Sunday morning feeling good and we dive into Monday morning and oh my Lord, huh? So in what ways does your faith get stuck on Sundays? Second question is this, what makes it hard for your faith to have traction come Monday morning? What makes it hard? And lastly, third question is this, how might you move your faith from Sundays to Mondays? From Sundays to Mondays. Let me offer up a prayer for you. Good and gracious God, you know every one of us, our faith gets stuck. It gets stuck in our head. It gets stuck on Sunday mornings. It gets stuck in our knowing. And as we think about what happens among us on Sundays, the thing we call church far too often, our, that's where our faith gets stuck. But God, you sent your son into this world who dared to suggest that what happens on Sunday has traction on Monday, that Sundays are nice. But God, you recognize that when we, where we really need this faith, where we really need the hope and the love that you give us, it's on Monday morning. So God, move in us. Move our faith from Sunday mornings to our Monday mornings. God, we pray this all in your name. Amen. Search my heart, God. Search my heart, God. Know my thoughts and my anxious mind. Take them and make them yours. Search my heart, God. I am.
please join us in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. If you're gathered together with your family, with friends, and want to keep the conversation going about the message today, we invite you to head on out to our website, calvaryalec.org, and there you'll find a discussion guide. If you want to celebrate communion, you'll find resources for that. But maybe most importantly, if you're new to Calvary, we'd love for you to head out to that website and click on the button that says sign up for email. We'd love for you to get on our weekly email list and that's how you can find out all the ways that you can get engaged in the life of faith here at Calvary. Last but not least, if you are in the Alexandria community, we would love for you to join us for in-person worship. Each and every Sunday, we gather together at eight o'clock here at the church for a traditional liturgical service. And then at 10 o'clock during the summer months, we gather out at Luther Crest Bible Camp on the west shores of Lake Carlos. If you come at 10 o'clock, you can worship, but come early at nine o'clock and we'll feed you brunch. Folks, I am so grateful for all the inviting you've done over the last several weeks. We had over a thousand people in church this last weekend. It's all because of you, because of your invites. Folks, you are making a difference. As we close today, uh, we're gonna close with our offering. Uh, but before we do, I wanna say a huge thank you for your incredible, incredible generosity. Because of you, we're providing meals for families here in our community who are hungry. We're supporting uh, teachers in our school district. We're supporting our food shelf. And it's all because of you. So thank you for your generosity. As we close today, you can make your offering in a couple of different ways. First off, you can head to our website, calvaryalec.org, and click on the Give button. Second way you can make your offering is by simply writing out a check and sending it to the address on the screen. And last but certainly not least, if you're not quite certain how to make your gift, just give us a call here in the church office and we would love to help you live the generous life that God is calling people like you and people like me to. Folks, have a great week.